we're live. Right. Okay, we are going to be doing some shoulder mobilizations and manipulations. So I'm going to start with my patient on his back. So we're going to start with a long axis distraction. Um, we have two ways to do this. So first and foremost, um, we want to get down as low as the patient. I'm going to hook, I'm going to always have him in as best of an anatomical position as I can. I'm going to hook on the inside of um, the humerus and then I'm going to stabilize at uh, kind of the lateral clavicle and upper uh, GH joint. From this position I'm going to, you can see my arm is parallel to his, I'm going to stabilize holding this down and apply a little bit of a, a super to inferior traction going in and out of end range here. I can apply a thrust if I feel comfortable and I'm not getting a patient response that indicates he's in pain. Pulling like that. We can also do a little bit of a bunny hop procedure with this one. I'm gonna hook his kind of elbow region right be between my knees. I'm gonna stabilize with my lower hand here, hand on the back side of the humerus, and we're going to just kind of start with that traction and that mobilization. Looks like he's pretty comfortable, and we apply that manipulation. The next two, we're going to do a super to inferior glide. This would be anyone that has any um, upper shoulder tension, discomfort. Um, a lot of times we see the trap pulling the shoulders up. So this is gonna be a very applicable manipulation or mobilization for a lot of patients. What we're gonna do is we're going to find the joint line, which usually if they're wearing a t-shirt lines up to that um, crease. And from this position, I'm going to do it in abduction, which just helps me get to end range. So I have him again, pull him up. He's in that anatomical position. I'm going to use the web of my hand right on that shoulder crease. I'm going to traction the shoulder joint. And from there, I'm going to apply a super to inferior mobilization. And if that feels good, we don't see any wincing in the patient's face, we can apply a manipulation force, a grade five. We can also do this in elbow, uh, with elbow flexion. So I'm gonna have my patient just kind of have his hand tucked on the back side of his neck. What I'm gonna do, this one's gonna be really useful maybe with a patient with frozen shoulder or who has limited abduction. We, he just can't ex, um, abduct with a full, fully straight arm. We're gonna put it in this position because this might be a little bit more comfortable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my middle finger contact right on top of the GH joint. I'm going to get as low as I can and the key to this one is that my shoulder is going to be stabilizing his elbow. We don't want to see it coming down like that. So I'm going to hook in here, find the top of the joint, stabilize. You can see he's straight up and down with his uh, humerus and we're just going to pull in applying that mobilization. And if he can handle a manipulation on that, or I think it's necessary, we'll do a super to inferior grade five manipulation. <laughs> Those are good ones to consider also for any impingement patterns in the shoulder because you're actually trying to make more space for those tendons to get under the acromion as they go to the greater tubercle. So very important for a biceps or a supraspinatus impingement that you're gonna try and open up some space for that uh, tendon to tunnel through. Yes, I think the first two, the long axis distraction and a super to inferior glide are going to be your two most useful shoulder uh, mobilizations or manipulations. We also have a medial to lateral glide with my patient's arm just kind of resting acro across his chest. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook in as close to the GH joint as I can and I'm just applying a traction, medial to lateral. Um, we're going to start with the mobilization on that. So I hook right in there, can get permission from my patient. Yeah. And then what I'm gonna do here again is I'm gonna use my shoulder to stabilize his elbow and we're just gonna apply this medial to lateral force. And if that indicates that we need a little bit more of a manipulation, then we can apply a straight medial to lateral manipulation. A variation, I'll do that one in this position here. And this is particularly useful for osteoarthritis of the shoulder. I have a handful of patients with mild to moderate osteoarthritis and you get an audible click just about every time and it's one of the best releases for them because when that's starting to cave in on itself if you can open up some space in there they will love you for it okay um and I, oh i should do an entry to post here 
So an anterior to posterior glide of the HGH joint. This is, we're gonna see this in a forward posture um, syndrome. We're going to upper cross syndrome. Anytime there's gonna be tightness in the pecs, uh, lats, things that attach on the GH joints or on the greater and lesser tubercle. So from this position, I'm gonna do it similar to the bunny hop maneuver we did with the long axis distraction. He's in that anatomical position. The difference here is we're not doing it, we're just doing a little bit of traction just to open up the joint, but then my force and my mobilization is gonna go through the anterior GH joint. The big thing to be aware of is that if they have any tendonitis or just anterior adhesion, it could be a little bit uncomfortable. So using a broad contact to start with that mobilization is key. And then if they can handle that, we can then apply that manipulation. With the manipulation, make sure you're doing a pretty good traction on the humerus and then applying that force. You can see my weight right on top of the shoulder joint. And then we apply that anterior to posterior. Uh, I guess I should say that that should be increasing global flexion. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I think you also want to say it helps centrate the joint, right? Because just about anyone could benefit from that. So many people come in with rounder shoulders. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's the, like this is your this is your postural okay. correction for what everyone is suffering from with that anterior shoulder, right? So we're going to use this um, manipulation, the anterior to posterior, for, to increase overall flexion of the GH joint. Uh, it also just centrates the joint, helps it get right back to the middle of the ball and socket joint, so there's not grinding or creating friction on the anterior surface of the GH capsule. We can do a posterior to anterior, so I'm gonna get my patient face down now. Um, a posterior to anterior manipulation and mobilization is going to increase a patient's extension. So in this position, Oh my it's not my table. Technical difficulties. It's not my table. There we not go. My table. Top there. <laughs> so in this position, I am going to take my patient's arm. I'm going to keep him in that anatomical position. So his palm is going to be down. I'm going to use a little bit of that just knee traction um, to keep his arm in position. What I'm going to do is use my outside hand on his anterior humerus. My, po my inferior hand on his posterior GH joint. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna traction the joint and then just apply a posterior to anterior mobilization. If we need to do a manipulation on that, we are just going to put a force right through the posterior aspect of the GH joint like that. Again, this is going to increase my patient's overall extension. Um, probably one that's used a little bit less often, but would be case specific. What about? So with anyone with that rounded shoulder position, we're probably going to try and increase the overall ex uh, external rotation also. We're gonna use that with a bunny hop procedure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both hands on the humerus, pulling my tissue slack into that external rotation. When I pull them into external rotation from there, now I can do my little bit of mobilization, opening up the rotation on the shoulder. From there, we can apply a little bit of a manipulation. We're gonna do the same for a internal rotation. This one's gonna be used a little bit less commonly. We see way more patients like this than like this. Um, so rarely am I actually gonna pull in, but there could be a case specific one for this. So both hand contacts on the humerus, pulling my tissue slack lateral to medial or into external to internal rotation, and then holding onto that tissue slack as I apply that mobilization with traction and a manipulation. <laughs> okay, we're going to do a uh, manipulation on the upper body. This is getting um, a whole bunch of joints affected here. So we're going to do a contact on the clavicle, which essentially is going to move the AC joint and the SC joint. Um, my backhand contact can vary. Um, typically, I'm going to go on the first or second rib with this. And what I'm actually going to do is drive through the clavicle. And I, instead of me doing a sandwich move, I'm actually going to do this type of a rotation on it. And what that does is it takes your shoulders from going in this position to opening them up. And it's really opening up the scapulothoracic joint. So to do this manipulation, I am going to um, hook my inferior arm through his elbow. I'm going to pull him up. I'm going to take my thinner contact onto that first or second rib. I can readjust it depending what I feel on my patient. I'm gonna hook on the clavicle, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, going to go um, I to S, anterior to posterior on the front hand here, and just a posterior to anterior on the back hand. 
So I'm gonna get my patient to do a big breath in, all the way out. Good. Whew. And what do we call this adjustment? I call it the Dr. Amber Eccle special because I've seen a lot of chiros over the years and I've never had an adjustment like that. It, it gets like all three bones of the shoulder. You get the rib, you get the clavicle, the scapula, the humerus. You quite often feel two, three, four pops with this and it's, it's quite freeing for the upper back and shoulder. So I love it. So to free up the, the SCAC um, and scapulothoracic joint and then go into manipulation or mobilization of the GH joint is pretty key. I would find in my practice to just fixing any shoulder issue that comes my way. TOS, TOS would be a really good one, right? I think that's why you get such great results with your TOS patients because that adjustment is not always done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just reiterate, it can be done as a mobilization. Oh, okay. and a this can be done as a mobilization or a manipulation. Um, you're going to get more movement, obviously, with a manipulation just because it's a higher force, but it can be applied and is quite easy to learn as a mobilization. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have a variation for an anterior to posterior glide on a smaller patient. Um, I'm going to have his arm just resting on me in that anatomical position. I'm going to do a thumb reinforced. You can't so, okay. that, or, or a you double can. thumb. Yeah. Um, contacts, so those are my two contacts. Double thumb, I can reinforce it if I just need a little bit more. On someone his size, I probably need to reinforce it. On a smaller patient, I could just do a double thumb contact. And basically, I'm just going to start with a mobilization anterior to posterior on the anterior aspect of the GH joint or GH line. And if we wanted to apply a force from there, we're going to go directly through. So to mobilize the entire shoulder um, in this position, in this lower down position, I'm going to hook kind of under my patient's armpit on um, and on the top I might move my hands around pending the direction I'm going but we can mobilize we can pull medial to lateral we can do an inferior to superior we can then stabilize and go more superior to inferior just using that web contact on each aspect of um, the GH joint yes so just mobilize after the camera and I could even have my patient flip over and use these same contacts on the poster aspect of the GH joint Okay. So we're going to do an anterior to posterior of the GH joint in a seated position. Um, from here I'm going to stabilize with my sternum against my patient's posterior shoulder. I'm going to start him a little bit lower and I'm going to find that sticking point. And what I'm going to do is take a calcaneal contact. So I'm going to clasp my fingers through the heels of my hand on his olecranon. And I'm just going to apply a posterior to anterior going through that kind of flexion range of motion. And if I find a sticking point, that might be where I spend a little bit more time. I can also apply a grade five manipulation right there, taking the end range and then thrusting anterior to posterior back to me. Repeat it with Drew Stroud on the table, or you're behind the Stroud on the table, just so you can see going through that range. Oh, okay. okay. Do I say it and say it all? No, just say the beginning. Of, just again, showing you how you check the different ranges. Okay. Again, we're just showing you how to check the different ranges. My sternum up against his backside of the shoulder. I'm hooking on the electronon and I'm going to just start by applying that A to P traction and just finding that sticking point of the joint. Right here on him I feel it about 90 degrees so I'm going to apply a little bit more mobilization in that range and if I want to do a manipulation I pull into end range and thrust through. Okay, yeah. okay so we're going to do a patient assisted uh, GH manipulation. So in this position I'm going to first teach my patient to put his hand on his hip and what he's going to do is he's going to pop his elbow back as fast as he can. He's going to keep a good upright posture. I'm going to hook on the front of the GH joint, clasping my hand. You can see my shoulders up against his elbow and I'm going to say go. <laughs> Cracked on setup. You went too hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to do a superior to inferior glide on the AC joint. So with the AC joint contacts, what we're going to use is his uh, lateral clavicle. Um, you can see that I have his arm resting on my leg. What I'm going to use is a web contact. I'm going to stabilize on the opposite shoulder. I can lean him into me to get that end range. And then from there, you can see my elbow straight up and down. And that's the force that's going to be going through that AC joint. So I'm going to start by just mobilizing that AC joint. If I want to apply manipulation in the case that it has gone superior, I am going to do a superior to inferior force. Slide the web to the lateral clavicle and then bring my elbow up nice and high. Just build, 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 build. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Once you feel it's locked, then it's a 
Yeah, again, mold first, and then yeah. you can so mobilization. So mold, and then it's a thrust of, oof. yeah, yeah, <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> Third variation for that would also be resting their arm yeah. on my shoulder, middle finger contact right on that lateral clavicle, um, and we're just going to go super to inferior, mobilizing that first, and applying that force if needed. What kind of test is that called? I have no idea. This is the Scottish Dr. Fagan. Fagan's still a GA. Dr. Fagan. So it's close to Fagan's test, except that you'd be on the GH joint. It's like a yeah. finger breadth off of Fagan's yeah. test, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. A finger breadth. Okay. Okay, so an anterior posterior glide on the AC joint is going to be performed using my hypothena region on the lateral clavicle. I'm going to bring his arm up. You can see it in about slight abduction and maybe 30 degrees of flexion. That just helps us get to end range. We find that lateral clavicle. We're going to use that hypothenar contact. You can see my elbow is going to be locked out. I'm just going to mobilize that lateral clavicle on the AC joint. And if I want to perform a manipulation, I can drive right through it. I'm going super to inferior. My form is going to determine that force. Um, we can do something very similar with a inferior to superior glide. Now the key here is that I get as low as possible. I find that lateral clavicle and my forearm essentially rests on his chest. So with a female patient, obviously make sure you're asking for consent or that they cover their chest with their own arm underneath. So we're gonna be in this position and we're gonna drive that mobilization inferior to superior. For a super to inferior, um, and we're going to do slight abduction, super to inferior on the AC joint. We're going to use our inside hand and we're just going to find that lateral clavicle and we're just going to mobilize that lateral clavicle inferiorly. And then if we want to perform a manipulation. And this one would be highly indicated in AC separations. Yes, this would be highly indicated in AC separations. So we're going to perform a posterior to anterior hook maneuver on the back side of the clavicle. We can target the AC joint or the SC joint pending um, which half of the clavicle we're going to contact. So in the case of the AC joint, I'm gonna go on the distal half of the uh, clavicle. I'm gonna hook underneath. So I want his arm as relaxed as possible so I can get underneath the clavicle. Once I get underneath it, then it can support his arm. From this position, I'm just gonna be pulling. This one's spicy. So anytime um, a patient has anterior neck carriage, maybe recent motor vehicle accident, spasm in the scalene, spasm in the omohyoid, you're gonna feel this kind of block that range of motion. Oh, yeah, I feel it, holy. And then I can do a manipulation. Oh! <laughs> By pulling. <laughs> Too dramatic. Well, there's a flick of a neuritis in there, thank you. <laughs> We could also do a poster to anterior on the medial half of the clavicle. So just hooking under that. I find this one a little bit easier to get on. Oh. Let the patient breathe. Good. We're just inching underneath of that medial half of the clavicle. And oh, then if we want to perform a manipulation, man. we would just do a high velocity force. Be gentle. I wasn't going to do it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> So for a medial to lateral mobilization of the uh, SC joint, we're going to contact the, we're going to be standing on the opposite side of the patient. Uh, our um, hypothenar is going to contact the medial clavicle at the SC joint and our fingers are going to line up along the axis of the clavicle. So I'm going to use that inferior hand. I can reinforce it if I need to. Um, and from here, I'm going to get as low as possible and I'm going to be performing a mobilization medial to lateral along the line of the clavicle. If I want to do a manipulation here, I take it to that end range and thrust through. For the lateral to medial on the SC joint, we're going to, there we go. No, you just, you just keep it there. there. Okay. All right, for lateral to medial on the SC joint, we're going to contact the medial one third of the clavicle. I'm gonna use my inferior hand on the medial clavicle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just follow that line of the clavicle, mobilizing that joint as it meets the sornum. We perform that mobilization and then we could perform a grade five manipulation if indicated, just 
like that. So for the I to S, inferior to superior of the SC joint, we're going to be on the medial clavicle. We're going to be driving inferior to superior along the line of the sternum. I'm going to use a hypothenar contact on that joint right there. Hook in, fingers are on the outside of the neck. I'm going to just mobilize inferior to superior, increase that range of motion. And then from there, we can perform that manipulation. Very similar, doing an anterior to posterior. I'm going to bring the arm into slightly more flexion. We're on that same medial aspect of the SC joint, but now I'm driving anterior to posterior. Good. Whew. And then last one would be super to inferior. Okay. And now you'll have that come to 90 or higher just to get them off that. So for a super to inferior on the SC joint, we're going to abduct our patient's arm at 90 degrees or higher. We're going to use our inside hand on the SC joint. I'm going to get him to maybe have his head a little bit out of the way. Um, I'm going to reinforce this one. And what I'm going to do is just mobilize super to inferior along his long axis of the body. And then from there, I can perform a manipulation like that. So we're going to do a variation of a medial to lateral on the clavicle uh, or on the SC joint. So I'm going to hook under his arm. I'm going to use a thenar contact on the medial SC joint. I'm going to reinforce it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull medial to lateral along the line of the clavicle. From there, I could take it to end range and do a slight thrust. I'm pulling towards my body. For a lateral to medial, very similar. We're going to... Do the same side? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just For a lateral to medial, way, right? we're going to tissue pull. Or would I go across? Nope, you'd be better off. Same side, right? Just grab this, but just slide yeah, across exactly. that so way. You're going to oh. set it up, right? So yeah, you're going to hook my in. other hand. Yeah, no, you're going to hook in like this. Yeah. This, this makes contact first. And then Second pulse. contact is right here. Yeah. There okay. you go. The other key thing to say for this is this is fundamental. For, if you're doing this, let me just Fundamental. This I is like. fundamental right here. You're setting up, you've got them hooked in, is you want to lift with your chest at the same time as you do that, and then it's nice because you can fade <laughs> right into your rotation. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why am I lifting? But no, you want to lift because you want to actually open them up. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You could, you could brace and traction me a little bit. Totally, and you could take it down other ribs if you want. You can say SC, and then I could actually go first rib, second yeah. rib, third But that's rib. medial to lateral. It is, Okay. But let's show that as a variation. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. And then your lateral to me, yeah, yeah. So we can also use a medial to lateral on on the first, second, third rib. So I'm hooking in, the inner contact on that rib head right off the sternum, and I'm pulling across and kind of lifting and opening him up. Um, I can apply that as a mobilization, and I could also apply that as a, as a force through it. For the lateral to medial of the clavicle, again, I'm gonna hook my arm underneath him. Now I'm going down along the line of the clavicle, so lateral to medial, kind of pushing that joint in. I'm gonna use my other hand to pull across. And then I can do this one. I could also add in a breath. So big breath in, all the way out. And I'm just gonna mobilize that. We're gonna do one more breath. And now I can do that with a manipulation. Put something behind. So we can do a bilateral distraction on the SC joints um, by using a hypothenar contact. Um, on each side, we're gonna do it crossed position. If I had something to bolster my patient up, like a foam roller or a thin foam roller or a pool noodle, I could put that underneath his spine vertically. Um, or if we have something to relax our patient's arm on, like a stool, that works too. He looks pretty comfortable in this position. I'm gonna take a M to L, I to S on both clavicles. I'm gonna get my patient to take a big breath in, all the way out. And I'm just gonna traction along the line of the clavicles. We can also perform a manipulation with this. Big breath in, all the way out. Good. And so I'm spreading and opening up the chest to just open up the posture. Okay. What is special planes? Yeah. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we have, we can glide it lateral to medial or medial to lateral, and then enforce in uh, upward or downward rotation. So from this position, what I can have my patient do is, should I have him here for a lateral to medial? Uh, no, can, just or just neutral, right? Be, yeah, totally. So with my patient in this neutral position, we're going to take a double thumb contact, but we're going to just line up our thumbs on the lateral aspect of the scapula. And from here, I can grab the superior and inferior angle, and I'm just going to mobilize 
super to in or uh, <laughs> lateral to medial, moving the scapula inwards towards the spine. We can also do an upward rotation in this position. So we're going to induce upward rotation with just him uh, lifting his arm. I'm going to use the web of my hand in both the super and inferior angles of the scapula. And from here, I'm going to try and enforce that. So I'm going like this. Does that make sense? We can do a downward rotation. I can put my patient's hand on the small of the back. Again, I'm taking a contact on the super and inferior angle. And now I'm trying to induce downward rotation. Good. And then medial to lateral. Should I do it like a hook in this position? Yeah, like, I would try and hook him. Okay. So same thing, put his arm behind his back. He's oh, relax okay. his shoulder, pull it out. Yep. So with a medial to lateral glide of the scapulothoracic joint, we can use a hook contact. Uh, my patient has his hand on the small of the back. That enables us to see the scapula. It just pops out um, from his spine. And we can hook on that, hook on that medial scapula. And then we're just going to pull it. And as a variation, you can put your hip against his shoulder. This one? Uh, this way. Yeah. Like lean right into him. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Just brace me. There we go. Yeah, exactly. Hold on there. And now, now lift, lift with your erectors and pull back like that. Yeah. Now you can lift up big people as long as you can get a hook in there with that. Yeah, that's good. All right. So should I describe that? Yeah, or? just start. Okay. For the medial to lateral glide of the scapulothoracic joint, we can have my patient start on his side. He can roll into me. My hip is stabilizing his shoulder. I'm going to take a hook contact on the medial scapula and I'm going to keep my elbows straight and I'm going to try to pull back with using my weight of my body. Good, come sit with your back facing there. A variation for that and just opening up the scapula thoracic joint. Fail. Well, it just <laughs> leaked off me. A variation for just getting some more motion through that scapula thoracic joint would be for my patient to sit up nice and tall, sit upright. We put his hand on the small of his back. I'm going to support my body against his, and I'm going to take my fingers and try and lift the scapula. And I'm essentially getting a medial to lateral, but I'm doing a little bit of prying of the angles of the scapula to get it off and just get it gliding a little bit better. Okay, so starting with a long axis of the elbow, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have him in that anatomical position, stabilizing at the wrist. What I'm gonna do is, am I okay? So I'm going to um, stabilize here. I'm gonna give it a bit of an anterior to posterior force on the humerus, and I'm gonna just start by tractioning the uh, radius and ulna. So I'm applying a mobilization and basically just pulling right along here. I can apply that as a general manipulation with a pull of the humeral ulnar and humeral radial joints. Um, if I want to be more specific with one, I can just move my hand over. Could I use a contact like that? Yep. I guess I can just do that. Um, use, move my contact over and stabilize. In this case, I'd be stabilizing more of the humeral ulnar joint and getting a traction on that one specifically. I can come a little bit more lateral and be on the humeral radial joint like that. So we're going to perform a lateral to medial glide, which is going to induce a glide at the humeral uh, radial joint and induce a gap on the humeral ulnar joint there. Um, what I'm essentially doing is uh, activating a valgus force on the radius and ulna. So I'm going to have my arm perpendicular to the joint I'm adjusting here. What I'm going to be doing on with the wrist is I'm providing a little bit of traction and valgus force. So I'm going to just apply that mobilization first in that position. And then if I want to do that as a manipulation, I'm pulling on the forearm and providing that lateral to medial on the humeroradial joint. The opposite of that would be inducing a bit of a valgus force. I'm going to be on the inside of my patient's arm. Um, I am going to stabilize at the wrist. I'm doing a medial to lateral glide um, at the humeral ulnar joint and a gap on the humeral radial joint. So I'm going to just apply that traction on the whole joint, doing that as a mobilization, medial to lateral. We can then apply a manipulation. 
So for just a, uh, increasing overall extension, we can just use a donut maneuver. <laughs> so I'm gonna make a little circle with my hand. I'm going to place his electronaut in my hand. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take him to that end range. We wanna be really careful with this one. Hyperextension um, of the elbow can be obviously very dangerous. If a patient already hyperextends, I, we don't wanna increase uh, that past zero degrees. Um, so we're just gonna mobilize that and we could do a little bit of a grade five manipulation on that. Um, we can also stabilize here. I'm gonna be again on the Electronon and I would use this one more as a mobilization and I'm just pushing posternanter on the Electronon in this case. Right now I'm on the lateral aspect of the Electronon but I could move over to the medial aspect of the Electronon and just be trying to mobilize that into a bit more extension. I would be careful with the manipulation on this one as we don't wanna overextend the elbow. <laughs> One of my favorite elbow adjustments, um, we noticed that with pronation, supination, obviously with pronation, the radial head should rotate or cross over the ulna. Um, so sometimes we're gonna see this range of motion being restricted and it has partly to do with how the radial head is moving. So in this position, what I like to do is I'll actually put my thumb right on that backside of the radial head. And what I'm gonna do is just give it a little posterior to anterior glide. Um, I'm doing a little bit of a lift up on the distal wrist. And then if I wanted to do a manipulation on it, I just want to make sure that my thumb is on that kind of 45 degree angles angle going down. And from there, oh, nice. Get a little click yeah, in yeah, the yeah. Very good. radial head. Okay. We can also mobilize it from the front side. Um, so just on the anterior aspect here, stabilizing here, I'm going to be on that radial head. I'm going to give it a little bit of an anterior to posterior glide. We can change just the direction of my thumb, doing a little bit of lateral to medial. If there's any adhesion on the radial head on that annular ligament, um, this would help just open that up. I could switch my hand around to get more of a medial to lateral glide on the radial head. Yeah. It can be sensitive just being Very. in close proximity to the forearm flexors, pronator teres, and obviously median nerve. So we can um, provide a anterior to posterior drive on the radial head here using a knife edge contact. Uh, we're just gonna bring him, do you wanna scoop back on the table? So I'm just gonna put my knee up just to stabilize him. I'm going to take that web or knife edge contact onto that radial head and we're gonna do that bit of a pump handle procedure. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing um, anterior to posterior on my inside hand and then posterior to anterior on my distal hand. So if that's too much pressure, we can actually just use a two finger contact. I'm gonna pull medial to lateral, take him into elbow flexion, and again, provide that mobilization. This works well on the other joint also. So on the inside joint, on the humeral ulnar joint, and then we just take it. So going onto that humeral ulnar joint, we can also apply that anterior to posterior traction. Would you do this with a little thrust potentially too? And I can do this with a little bit of a manipulation yeah. at the end range on either sides of the joint. Nice. <laughs> We're gonna start with a general mobilization of the carpal joints. I am going to use my thenar aspects and hand to just kind of stabilize his carpals. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna provide compression while he open and closes his hand. Nice and slow. Good, you can do this for maybe five, 10 reps. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna mobilize the proximal and distal row of carpals. Um, we're gonna do, just start with a posterior to anterior glide on the uh, distal row. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be stabilizing my proximal row here, and then with the distal row, I'm gliding it posterior to anterior. I can do the opposite of that and I can do an anterior to posterior on the distal row. I can also use my other hand um, as my mobilization hand and move the proximal row on the distal row. So now I'm gonna use this hand for stability and I'm pushing down and then pulling up. Lastly, with these same hand contact, I could actually just do a bit of a shear Back and forth, anterior to posterior, posterior to anterior. And, that feel? and medial to lateral, make sure. Yeah. I can also do medial to lateral, lateral to medial. 
if we want to get on one carpal specifically, um, we can then take a double thumb contact and we can just push that posterior to anterior on any one of them specifically. This can be done in this position or I could have my patient laying down and have it on my knee or have their hand just on a table. We can flip them over. Do the allotment one. Th thumb beside thumb. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? You trap one bone with this thumb, one bone beside it with this thumb. Like this. And then you're just... But I'm forward and back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can just... You're sharing. You can scan the whole wrist that Oh, okay. Way. Yeah. What do I call that? Just it's called a carpal yeah. ballotment. It's like a ballotment test, or you can scan the entire okay. wrist, it's great. Um, another way to scan the wrist would be to use a ballotment. So we're just putting one thumb on one bone and the other thumb on the other bone, and we're just shearing it back and forth, moving my way across the wrist through the two rows of carpal bones. That's how I could find if one has misaligned specifically, and I want to do a bit more force on that one. Okay. So we can also flip the hand over and do it very similar, um, providing that anterior to posterior direction. Just keep in mind all the contents of the carpal tunnel and just the meat of the muscles. Ooh. Is all distal radial ulnar joint. Distal radial ulnar, yeah. I'm going to do a distraction through the distal radial ulnar joint. So what I'm going to do is a crossed thumb contact. I'm on uh, the distal radius, distal ulna, and what I'm trying to do is actually just separate them a little bit. So I'm applying that as a mobilization. I can also apply that as a actual manipulation across. So our force is going like an X. Um, we can bring our patient into extension and we can be using a, be better that way or that way? I go with fingers, reinforced finger contact. Reinforced finger contact. Yeah. So I can use a reinforced finger contact going across the rows of the carpals, just seeing how they're moving in a posterior to anterior direction. I'm just going to test them. In this position, I may see that the lunate is uh, displaced a little bit or posterior, so we can provide a little bit of a mobilization or manipulation on that. Working our way across, we can flip my patient up, we can bring him into a little bit of flexion. We want to keep his forearm as relaxed as possible so that it just relaxes the muscles for us to get through. If I've noticed that the scaphoid has been a little bit out of place or misaligned, we are going to get my patient to extend his thumb. That finds the anatomical snuff box. I'm going to take my thumb, uh, pat on my thumb and put it right into there. He's going to relax. I am going to use my other hand to just mobilize that joint in a posterior to anterior and traction on the joint. If I want to perform the manipulation, I'm going to get my patient to lean away from me. Oh! And thrust through the joint I get uh, with that long X distraction. That one's a bit more specific for that direction. The rest of them will be just with that traction in a posterior to anterior or anterior position. So mobilizing that, my patient leans away, and then we thrust in away. Good. It's like snapping a wet towel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so adjusting into the fingers is probably as basic as uh, our adjustments go. Uh, we're providing a traction. There could be a little bit of an L to M, M to L. This can be used for any of the phalanges. Uh, what I want to do is to make sure to stabilize the distal, the proximal joints. Uh, and then we're going to line up our thumb and fingers with the the phalange that we're, we're mobilizing. So in this case, if I'm doing the first, uh, second MCP, I'm going to stabilize at the head of the metacarpal, and then I am going to be just providing that long axis traction on the joint. If I'm gonna do a manipulation, I can either do a straight pull out, or I can do a pull with a little bit of a flick up. We can apply that at the distal joints too, middle or distal. Um, if I go right to the end, we just need to make sure we're stabilizing at the closest joint um, proximally. Oh, I just said. Peter Pointer. Peter Pointer.